Hello and welcome to HITC Sport. Right, today I'm going to look back at how long it's been since every Premier League club was embarrassed, from the most number of days to the fewest. And, and obviously, if you're not watching this video on the day it came out, 30th of January 2021, the figures won't be accurate, but that won't stop people in the comments saying I'm wrong. Brighton, 658 days ago. For all Brighton spend most of the days lingering around the relegation zone, they're very rarely embarrassed. I mean, they've had a couple of 5 0 pumpings off Man City, but who hasn't in recent years? But for Brighton's last proper humiliating defeat, I'm going all the way back to April 13th, 2019, at a time where Brighton fans were only worried that Chris Hutton would keep them in the division. Fast forward nearly two years, and like everyone else, they aren't even allowed in the piss and ground. The Seagulls got absolutely hammered by Bournemouth on this day, with the Cherries winning 5 0 at the Amex. There was a ridiculous red card from Anthony Knockout, a breathtaking display from David Brooks, and look for all the world that Brighton were on a downward spiral that we just couldn't get out of. Fast forward 658 days and Brighton are still in a relegation fight, while Bournemouth are spending their days in the championship up against the likes of Wigan Wanderers and Millwall. West Ham 493 days Again, I was certain West Ham had been embarrassed much more recently, I mean they nearly went down last season for goodness sake. I suppose in hindsight the defeat in Newcastle this season was pretty embarrassing considering how badly they've turned out, but instead I'm going back 493 days to the 25th of September 2019, which is actually only last season, which kind of feels weird. Anyway, it was a League Cup tie, the Hammers went on the road to Oxford, expecting to advance to the next round. In the end, they all came back with faces red when they were smashed 4-0 by League One Oxford United. This was a golden opportunity for Manuel Pellegrini to challenge for a trophy, and he blew it. 493 days later, and the Hammers are gunning for the title under David Moyes. Stop the world, I'm getting off, Jesus Christ. 18th Tottenham, 483 days. The appointment of Jose Mourinho was a controversial one, as Tottenham went from a dreamer in Pochettino to a pragmatist in the special one. But here we are at the start of 2021, and I think it's fair to say that while it hasn't always been rosy, Tottenham have never been embarrassed under Mourinho. I mean, you could count the Leipzig Champions League exit, but I think that was more just down to the German side being really good. But for Tottenham's last proper humiliation, I'm going back to October 2019, which was a pretty rough month for Spurs. On the first, they lost 7 2 at home to Bayern Munich, then on the fifth, they were batted 3 0 away to Brighton. Spurs were horrendous on that day, making a Brighton team struggling for goals look like Kevin Keegan's entertainers. Pochettino looked desperate at this point, and it wasn't long after that he was heading to the job centre. Southampton, 463 days ago. It was a Friday night, it rained a lot, Ryan Burton got sent off, Leicester scored 9, even Iosa Perez got a hat trick. it was the largest ever away win in the history of the top flight, Leicester made a DVD, it gets mentioned anytime anything Southampton related crops up on the television, they've been great ever since. Next. 16th Everton, 391 days ago. The Toffees looked great under Carlo Ancelotti, but that wasn't the case when he first arrived. In fact, just weeks after his appointment, the Italians suffered a defeat that would probably still haunt them. 391 days ago, Everton went to Anfield for an FA Cup tie, in a game where Klopp was going to play the kids. The fix has been piling up for Liverpool, having gone to Qatar just before Christmas for the Club World Cup. All the while, Everton pretty much had a fully fit squad, and nothing else to play for. It seemed all set for Ancelotti to end Everton's horrendous Anfield run, secure an early derby victory over the rivals, and advance to the fourth round of the Cup. Instead, it was the Liverpool reserves who triumphed, with Curtis Jones' wonder goal splatting a big juicy egg all over Carlo Ancelotti's Italian face. 15th Aston Villa 384 days ago Villa could very easily have gone down last season, and when they got smashed by Man City at home on January 12th, relegation almost looked like a certainty. I know it's City, many teams have been battered by them in the past, but there's a way to lose, and Villa didn't play that way. They were absolutely hopeless, they could barely string a pass together. It's genuinely the only time I can remember Danny Drinkwater playing for the Villa, he might as well not have bothered. It was a severe low for Villa and Dean Smith, who went from agony to ecstasy not long after when they secured their place in the League Cup final, setting up another date with Manchester City. Christ, Dean Smith was probably having sleepless nights going into that game, he remembers the last team to get humiliated by Man City at Wembley. 14th Arsenal 338 days ago. Genuinely surprised at this, but when you look back at their results this season, the Gunners have never really been embarrassed, they've just lost. I mean, the furloughing of staff over the summer was pretty embarrassing, but let's just focus on matters on the pitch. Instead, I'm going back to February of last year, as Arsenal looked to progress in the Europa League, which appeared to be their best avenue yet again of securing Champions League football. Instead, they were knocked out by Olympiakos. They didn't even make it to the mini tournament over the summer in Germany. Not only were they eliminated, it was literally the last minute of extra time. 
It looked like Aubameyang had saved them, only for Arsenal to concede again in the 120th minute and resign themselves to another year without Europe's elite competition. In hindsight, it was probably for the best. 13th Burnley 222 days ago I know I said I wouldn't look at off-field issues, but this one here coincides with a pretty brutal defeat. Burnley went to the Etihad with barely any players and got smashed 5-0, see, told you it happens to everyone, yet all Ben May had to talk about in his post-match press conference was a plane that flew over the ground before kickoff with a banner saying, White Lives Matter, Burnley, as players began taking the knee in the fight against racial inequality. A very embarrassing day for Burnley Football Club. Leicester 202 days ago The Foxes appear to be in a title race this season, but they'll be more concerned about just qualifying for the Champions League. They completely threw it away last season, and a defeat 202 days ago was a big reason. They went to a desperate Bournemouth side on July 12th, looking to re-establish their dominance in the race for the top four. At half time all looked well, the Foxes were playing well and winning. One hour later and it ended Bournemouth 4, Leicester 1. They completely collapsed against one of the most out of form teams in the country, and they even conceded twice to the Dominic Solanke of all people. That was embarrassing in itself, never mind the result. 11th Manchester City 125 days ago. Speaking of Leicester, it was them who handed Man City their last humiliation. 125 days ago, Leicester absolutely battered Man City at the Etihad, with a 5-2 win making Pep Guardiola's side look a million miles away from their former selves, and a team nowhere near a title charge. Then the side Ruben Diaz and all was well again. Now they look pretty much unstoppable. 10th Liverpool 118 days ago Right, some of you will be hammering me for not picking the Burnley defeat the other day as the last time Liverpool were embarrassed, but was it embarrassing? It was a late penalty winner. If you weren't embarrassing, you can't look any further than that fateful night at Villa Park on October 4th. Liverpool, the Premier League champions, the best defence around, conceded 7 to Aston Villa. This wasn't Liverpool with a patched up back four. Virgil van Dijk was there with all his limbs intact, and even he couldn't stop Ollie Watkins from making a mockery of the Reds. It says a lot that on a day where Man United lost 6 1 to Spurs, that wasn't the biggest shock of the day. 9th Fulham 84 days ago. Fulham have been kind of naff pretty much all season. I mean, even when they've started to play sort of well, they still can't win games. But there haven't been many hammerings, which is positive. But that didn't stop a 1 0 defeat at the London Stadium, ending with every Fulham fan watching on in disbelief with their head in their hands. It's the final minute, they get a penalty. Adam Ola Luckman takes the ball. All he has to do is score to hand Fulham a vital point. But that wasn't enough for Luckman, who wanted to do things a bit more spectacularly, as he looked to dink it straight down the middle and make Lucas Fabianski look like more of a tit than Gemma Collins falling down a hole. In the end, it was Luckman who looked like a tit, as he implored the ground to swallow him up like something out of Stranger Things. What a knobhead. 8th Crystal Palace 42 days ago. While it wasn't as bad as Southampton losing to Leicester, Crystal Palace got an absolute paste in 42 days ago. While Liverpool have struggled for goals recently, they had no such issue with Selhurst Park on December 19th, with the champions putting 7 past Roy Hodgson's desperate side. Not only that, Palace got worse as the game went on. You'd think eventually they'd just sit in and defend to make sure things don't get any worse, but instead they just rolled over and took the beating like whichever bum Jake Paul faces next in the boxing ring. Palace you're humiliated at home, in front of no fans, on the same day that Boris Johnson called off Christmas. Rough day, eh? 7th Chelsea 35 days ago on the day after we were all out to see our family in person rather than over a dodgy Zoom call, Chelsea headed the Emirates licking their lips. Arsenal were bang out of form, they had a load of injuries and seemed there for the taking. Instead, Arsenal's young guns shocked the Blues and went on to win 3-1, a victory that inspired this Mikel Arteta revival that we're all witnessing. All the while it piled so much pressure on Frank Lampard that he's since been replaced by Jurgen Klopp if he decided to buy him off Wish.com. 6th Sheffield United 35 days ago the Blades have been wretched all season, but to their credit, most of the defeats have been narrow. It's not been for lack of try and the effort's still there, they've just been less likely to score than a nerdy kid in a nightclub. But the defeat to Evan on Boxing Day certainly was embarrassing, even if it was only 1-0. The defeat ensured Sheffield United remain rooted at the bottom of the table, whilst making it the joint worst ever start to a season in the top four divisions of English football. And now it looks like they're at the beginning of a great escape, Christ football's a funny old game. 5th West Brom 21 days ago Despite Sam Allardyce taking charge, West Brom are still awful. They've been giving away goals like the trips to Dubai for influencers, suffering heavy defeats to Leeds, Arsenal and Manchester City. But three weeks ago, they were embarrassed even more. Big Sam probably didn't fancy a cup run, but they still shouldn't have had enough to beat Blackpool. But no, the baggies were knocked out of the cup, meaning Big Sam could now focus solely on his appalling team's somewhat inevitable relegation. Leeds 20 days ago 
Whatever West Brom can do, Leeds can do so much better. Just a day after the baggies crashed out of the cup and couldn't even have a night out in Blackpool to drown their sorrows, Leeds had an even more embarrassing defeat. Bielsa named a change side but one that still should have been good enough to win, but alas they were knocked out of the cup by a League 2 side in Crawley Town. Not only that, a Crawley Town side who had Mark Piss and Wright sitting on the bench, who came on when the result was no longer in doubt. Christ, if Crawley had scored any more goals that had brought on Jamie Lang and Judge Piss and Rinder. Third Newcastle 18 days ago. Most Newcastle performances under Steve Bruce are kind of embarrassing, but the one 18 days ago took the biscuit. The thing is, it was kind of inevitable. Sheffield United hadn't won a game all season, so went as Steve Bruce's Newcastle United, who looked about as impressive as Rio Ferdinand's boxing career. The Magpies were pulled apart by the Blades, which was a real shock for Brucey, who thought putting Paul Dummett at wing back and playing two false tens was a stroke of genius. It wasn't, and the Magpies became the first team to lose to Sheffield United this season, a team who seemed as bad as Derby County all those years ago, a team that still took four points off the Magpies for Christ's sake. Second Wolves 14 days ago. You know just before when I was saying how crap West Brom had been under Sam Allardyce? Yeah, it didn't stop them beating Wolves though, did it? This must have been one of the lowest moments for Wolves fans since Nuno took them over, and the lucky things didn't get worse a few days later when they narrowly got out of Chorley unscathed. And number one, Man United three days ago. Despite looking like genuine title contenders, Man United have been embarrassed a fair few times this season. But three nights ago they went one further when they were beaten by bottom of the league Sheffield United. It was a chance for Manchester United to lay down a marker, but all they did was show themselves up to being nothing more than pretenders, just days after a huge victory over Liverpool in the Cup. Not only did they lose to Sheffield United, which is a huge shock in itself, but they conceded a winner to Oliver Burke, a man whose finishing is so bad I wouldn't back him to come first in a one-man hot dog eating competition. So there we have it, that's every club's last embarrassing defeat, in order of least to most recent. Let me know what you think in the comments down below, as always don't forget to like, share and subscribe to HITC Sport, and until next time we will see you around.